Let's talk about performance. Rendering a grid is a two-step process. First of all, we need for each line to calculate its ending points, starting and ending point, and then we need to pass each of these lines for rendering individually. Since grid framework version 1.2.4, we have a caching feature, which means as long as I don't change this grid, we can reuse the old points and don't need to recalculate them every frame. So as long as I don't touch this grid, I can rotate and stuff, but I don't change the grid, we reuse these old points. Now if I take this grid and then change, for example, the range, then the computer recalculates these points again. However, the second process, passing the points to rendering, we cannot cache. So this needs to happen each and every single frame. So the larger your grid, so if we make a really huge grid, we can see performance drop down. So what do we do if we want to have a huge grid which extends beyond the screen? So let's play. And as you can see, we have a grid which, if I scroll the camera, it just goes on and on and on and on. So it looks like this grid is really large, which in fact it isn't. We take a look at our scene. And now, if we move the camera a little bit, nothing happens. If I move it to the right, you can see the grid actually resizes. So we have a small grid and we don't redraw it every single frame, so we can make use of caching. But for the player it still looks as if the grid was infinitely large. So how does it work? We have a script on our camera, which has this grid passed to it, so we know which grid we need to resize. And then we have a buffer. In this example it's 10 world units, so as long as I move my camera only less than 10 units to either side, we don't need to recalculate the grid and caching kicks in. Now once I move this grid beyond 10 units, the grid gets recalculated and we adjust our range of the grid, which I mean render from and render to. So the entire range gets moved where the, where the new camera is. We can play around with the buffer, for example, if I set my buffer to zero, then the grid will be exactly as large as the camera, and it will always be recalculated once when I move my camera, but we have less points. So it's a matter of finding the perfect balance between buffering and redrawing. Let's now take a look at how we can write such a script that creates the illusion of having an infinitely large grid. Let's start by making a script called Infinity Camera. And first of all we need to require a component. And it's going to be type of camera. So we need a few variables. First of all we need a uh, public float called buffer. And let's set it to 10 as a default value. And we also need a grid. So pub public gf grid. I'll call it my grid. And we also need a speed for our camera. I'll just copy paste it. We have camera speed, which is the default speed of our camera. We have speed boost, so it's a speed factor. Um, let's say times two, and a speed button, boost button, which will be left shift. We will also use a few cache variables. So we will cache our transform, so we don't have to call get component every time. We also need to save our last position, which is the position where our grid has been recalculated last time and we will also cache the camera so we don't have to call get component every frame. So let's start by setting our wake. 
first of all transform is sort of transform and can this get component of type camera and we need to set our last position also so let's say last position is simply the starting position of our camera so transform dot position and we will also use auto orthographic cameras so let's say dot cam dot orthographic equals true of course you could do this with a perspective camera as well but the math is more complicated and it's basically the same idea just let's keep it simple for this tutorial so the next thing we want to do is once we start our game, we want this grid, grid range to fit our camera. So if we say, see this rectangle, and we want to do this automatically. So we don't have to do it before the game starts. So if I just copy paste it in, we start uh, with our x, x size, which is aspect of camera times of our graphic size plus our buffer, and I've multiplied it with 1.1 just to add a little bit extra. For Y we can just use camera size plus buffer and then we set rendering range. Our from is the center of our camera minus X and the center of our camera minus the Y and we leave that value alone. And the same for render2 and we just use plus instead of minus. So we need now some functions as well. First of all we'll use our update. This is where the logic will happen. Then we need a function to resize our grid, so let's call it resize grid. And we need one to handle our movement, so let's call it handle movement. For movement we'll use something sim very simple. So we just say transform position plus equals and then we take our horizontal axis, our vertical axis, and we leave that alone. Times camera speed, times 1 if the key is not held down, and speed boost if it is held down, and times time dot delta time, just to make it frame rate independent. So let's handle our movement by saying handle movement. And this is already enough to move the camera, but it's not enough to resize our grid. Now, first thing, we don't want to resize our grid every frame. So we say if and mathf dot apps of transform dot position, which is our current position of the camera, and minus last position dot x in both cases if it is greater or equal to our buffer or the same thing for our y only then do we actually resize our grid now how do you how do we resize our grid first of all we need to know, uh, let's, let's just make so we can see it. Now first of all we need to know how much to resize our grid. So obviously in this case we go 10 units to the left and 0 units upwards. Now if I do something more like this, we also need to move left and upwards. So to store this value I'll create a vector 3 call it shift no, range shift and we'll set it to vector 3 dot zero for now and next thing we is we need to set our x and y for our range shift so let's do it in one run create a variable a uh, loop for i int i equals zero i less than 2 
and I++. And our range, shift within xi, is simply our current position. Index i minus last position, index i. And that's all we need, so we can now change our range. My grid dot render from plus equals range shift, and we also do the same thing for our render two. plus equals range shift and now the last thing we need to do is set our last position to current position and that's it let's save go over to unity hit play And let's just fix some typos. Yeah, misspelled component. Let's try again. And there we go. So as you can see, as long as I just move within our buffering range, we don't recalculate points and we save performance. We could also play with our buffering values a little bit. We can set, set it to something negative. Or if we want to see only part of a grid. So obviously not very useful, but you know, in case you want, you can do it. We can also increase our speed boost. Yeah, whatever. So obviously if you want to move faster, you might want to increase your buffering range. So you have to recalculate less frequently. But now it's just a matter of finding the right balance. Now let's add just one more little thing. A GUI function. So we can get a small notification when we reset our grid, recalculate our grid. So here you can see our last save position, our current position, and now once we reached past 0, minus 10, we recalculate our grid. So here you can see how it actually works. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.